Hi, I'm Lucas Ashley. I'm the lead pastor here at the Bridge Church, and just want to say thank you for taking some time to uh, join us in the message today. Um, but we want you to first of all know that we're just really praying that today's message is just simply a tool that the Holy Spirit uses to encourage you in your growth in your journey with Him. Um, but really what we're hoping is that it's a tool that is used in partnership with you being plugged into a local church community. Whether that's here with us in Bradenton or wherever it is that you might be watching from. We love anytime we can be an encouragement to somebody, but we know that that's what we're called to do is be a part of a local community and a local church. Um, but if it is a source of blessing in your life today, we just wanna encourage you to do three simple things. First and foremost, thank God for it. Any bit of encouragement or blessing that we can be is simply the Holy Spirit at work in your life today. So make sure you thank God for all that's going on in, or in and around your life. Um, but second is feel free to share it. You can share a link to the message or just share it through conversation as you're talking to people about how the Lord is working in and around your life. Um, but then also share it with us. We love to hear stories of how the Holy Spirit is working in people's lives in and outside of our community. You can do that real simply by emailing us at amen at bridgechurchfl.com. Um, and then you can also just follow along, whether that's subscribing to our page or follow us on social media to see what all the Lord is doing through the ministries here at the Bridge Church. Um, and last but certainly not least, if you'd like to partner with us financially as we continue to partner with the Lord and bringing hope to those in our community and globally, you can do so by giving through our website. It's bridgechurchfl.com slash give. We're praying for you today and hope today's message is a source of blessing and encouragement for you. Well, welcome. My 10 o'clock service. I like it. How are you? Some of y'all chose to sleep in a little bit this morning. That's all right. Don't feel too bad because there's a whole another group coming in an hour that chose to sleep in longer than you. Um, but hey, we are excited you are here. Um, today is kind of a new season for our church going back to three services. Um, so we're, we're excited you're here. And in spite of everything that you chose to spend some time with us or if you're watching online, that you chose to do the same thing. And um, if we haven't gotten to meet, I'm Lucas Ashley. I'm one of the pastors here at The Bridge. And it's my honor this morning uh, to, to bring the Word of God to you and to walk us through some scripture and some passages to see how God wants to direct us towards righteous living in, in view of who he is and what he has called us to in this life. Over the past uh, five, six weeks, we've been walking through a series called Welcome to the Family. And we've covered everything from marriage and relationships to just the foundation we need in Christ in order to build every relationship in a healthy position and in a healthy way. Um, and, and we'll cover a lot, and, but we won't cover everything in the series because today's the last day. Um, and the reality is this, we could extend this series for weeks and weeks and weeks to come, but uh, next Sunday, we want to make sure you invite you back. Um, no matter what happens, there's just a timely series that we've had planned for months um, that I think will be very suited for where we are and what we're walking through. And it's a series called Pursuing Peace. Um, and we're going to walk through six weeks of what it looks like to pursue peace in our life, what it looks like to leave a legacy of peace in the way that we live and the way that we walk in faith in God, what it looks like to pursue peace amidst disagreement and struggle as we look at our country and our election season and everything that is coming towards us, to simply what does it mean to have peace with, between us and Christ, peace between us and God, peace that remains in spite of the circumstances we cannot change. And so there's a lot coming in that that I think will be good for us, but this morning we want to close out our series, Welcome to the Family, by talking about what I think is one of the most important things we can learn how to do better in our life, and that is communicate. Communication is one of the most powerful gifts and tools that we have in our life. And, and we can always be reminded of it. Just a show of hands, how many of you have been affected positively by communication? Like anyone ever spoken something to you that you just kind of held on to? It's like they speak that, you weren't prepared for it, but you're like, I'll take that, I'll hold on to that, right? We were down at the farmer's market yesterday um, in downtown Brainton, just supporting some friends and then buying a lot of food that we didn't know existed and that we didn't need, but yet it's in our pantry anyways. And um, we were parking and we were getting ready to leave and, and the sweet, um, these, these two sweet ladies uh, came up and we saw them park and 
they realized they had to pay to park there, and of course, everything's digital. And so they were, they were a little confused as to how to, to park and how to pay for it. And they were just going to leave and go try to find somewhere else to park. And so we just decided, you know what, let's, let's help them. Let's walk them through it. And it took about 30 seconds to realize there was no walking them through this. Um, and we just told them, we were like, you know what, just what, tell us your license plate number. We'll, we'll just get it for you. We'll, 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 we'll say, you know, it's like five, ten bucks. Like, we'll, we'll get it, whatever. It's all good. And, you know, she's very sweet. She's like, well, I'll pay you now. I'm like, no, you won't. I promise. Like, if I took your money for helping you, my dad would fly from Texas to here just to smack me in the back of the head, okay? I'm like, we're good. Don't worry about it. And it was the sweetest little thing. She just looked at me, a little short little thing, and just these big, big eyes and just said, oh, angels do exist. And I was like, you hear that? Angel right here, okay? <laughs> Mark it as truth, Okay. And it's one of those things, it was like, I don't even know you, but I'm gonna hold on to that for at least a year. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't like you, whatever. Someone thinks I'm an angel, back off, okay? Um, it's one of those things where we never know what we need until we hear it and we realize, man, I needed to hear that today. But then you have the other side, right? Anybody ever been affected negatively by communication, by words, by actions? If you're breathing, you have. If you woke up today, you have. If you turned on social media, you have, okay? Like, everyone is impacted some way, somehow, by communication in our life. And it's a thing that we have to understand because when you really look at it, I mean, everything points to the power and the influence of communication. I mean, you go back to the gospel and the scriptures. Everything in here was originally communicated audibly. And then now it's communicated through the written word. We read the New Testament. These were letters spoken and shared aloud in the communities. This was Paul and Silas and Barnabas in the lot of the apostles traveling from town to town, audibly sharing the gospel, watching people be transformed from death to life by believing in the audible teaching of God's word. The stories and the law of the Old Testament were passed from generation to generation audibly through communication. Good news is shared by communication and so is bad news. Wars are declared and ended through communication. Careers are made and ruined through communication. You realize any preacher on any Sunday could walk up and ruin their career in one sentence if they are not careful and cautious in seeking God and what to say. They could lead a soul astray through a wrong word spoken or given. There is authority and power and influence in communication. Marriages begin with a phrase, I do. And unfortunately, marriages end with a phrase, I don't anymore. Relationships are created and destroyed through communication. Information is given for clarity or it causes confusion by how it is communicated. There is nothing in our hands more powerful than communication. And we have to understand that before we even dive into the how do I do this better and how do I communicate in a way that glorifies God, it starts by us understanding the power of what God has given us. And so there's this foundational truth that we need to understand as kind of our building block this morning. And that's the simple reality that all communication carries the power of influence. It's not just whether you choose to influence someone in what you say or do today. It will influence someone. The question is who and how. Because we have different areas and ways and people that we influence in the way, in the things that we say. This is why so much of scripture points to communication. In fact, in the letter that James writes, it's the book of James in scripture. If you're ever looking for uh, maybe a more like shallow pool way to like step into learning and reading scripture, start in James, okay? I think James is one of the most easily understandable and applicable books in scripture. And from verses one through three, you're already gonna find things that you can begin to easily apply in your life. You don't always like what it says, but it is applicable in your life. And one of those areas is in chapter three, James touches on this, the power of communication. And I wanna give you a little warning It doesn't sound hopeful when you read it, okay? It sounds like there is no choice but for us to be terrible at communicating. It's what it sounds like. But just hang with me. Hope is coming, I promise. But let's see what James says. In James chapter three, starting at verse one, he begins and says, Dear brothers and sisters, 
Not many of you should become teachers in the church. For we who teach will be judged more strictly. We talked about that a minute ago. Indeed, we all make many mistakes. For if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect. And could also control ourselves in every other way. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. A small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, and even though the winds are strong. Verse 5, and in the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting the entire body. I told you it's not going to sound great at first, okay? We'll we'll get there. Hope is coming. Hang in there. The whole tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting the entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. I promise it's coming. Hang on. Verse 7, people can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. That's not it. It's coming. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. That's not it either. Verse 9, sometimes it praises the Lord our Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in God's own image. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble up, both fresh and bitter? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No, and you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. Here we go, verse 13. But if you are wise and understand God's ways, then you'll prove it by living an honorable life. And doing the good works with humility that come from that wisdom. As impossible as it sounds for us to speak and communicate in a way that doesn't just destroy everything in our path, it all comes down to if we have wisdom from God in how to do it. And so we start by just looking at the reality that, again, all communication carries the power of influence. And so the first thing we have to understand is, who am I influencing? When you speak today, when you communicate today, who are you influencing with that communication? It all depends on where you are in the moment. See, communication for me, I I liken it to fans. I like fans, not like, ooh, I love you, like the little angel ladies. I'm not talking about them. They're awesome. I mean, like physical fans. I'm from Texas. I'm from the South where it is hot 12 months a year, just like Florida. And so we like fans. If you ever see our home, we have fans in every room, and they never turn off. We go on vacation, they stay on. We go to sleep, they stay on. It's winter, they stay on, okay? We like air to be moving. It makes us feel better, okay? And here's the thing we've realized. There's a lot of fans for a lot of scenarios. And so this is one that we would take to like an amusement park. So everyone in our family has this. They got the neck fans now. You don't even have to care, like hold them, right? You just like wrap them around your neck and like just point at your face. It's amazing, okay? That's God's grace in real life, okay? So we have these. The reality is this does affect me, but it's not going to affect anyone very far from me. So there are some aspects of our communication that are only going to touch those closest to us. There are words we say in our life and things we say and don't say and actions we do and don't do that will only impact those most intimately connected to us, our spouses, our kids, our parents as we're younger and as we're older. There is a reality to the intimacy that some of our communication impacts. But then there's other areas of our life where what it impacts goes a little further. So that's my personal fan. This is my travel fan. And you think I'm joking. This goes on planes. This went to Africa with me, okay? It is battery operated. I can charge it on a battery pack. I will always have a fan with me, okay? And the reality is, is this one is good just for me and anyone standing right next to me. This one can get everyone in a small room. So in our bedroom when we're staying in Africa or in a tent on a camping trip, not that our family camps, but you get the picture, all of this happening, while it's not huge, it will impact more people. If I turn it on, maybe you'll feel it, but probably not the people behind you. 
But this is other relationships. There are the most intimate relationships that are impacted by our communication. Then there are those that expand a little further. Maybe it's our neighbors. It's in our neighborhood and community. It's those that we're in small groups with in church. We're not with them every moment of every day. We're not super intimate with them, but we are connected to them. And so because of that, when we speak from that position and in that area, they are impacted and influenced by the way we communicate. But then there are other positions and areas of our life where the communication goes even further. This is our garage fan. You think I'm joking. It's not. We have a fan for our garage. Every room in the house, I told you, is going to have a fan. Just like a Christmas tree will be happening in every room of our house, okay? This fan is a little bigger than that one. And the purpose is because it needs to cover more space. And so while there are some areas of our life where only a small group of people will be impacted by what we communicate, there are larger areas of our life in which people will be impacted by what we communicate. So maybe in this position, this is you as an employee or an employer. It's you as a team lead. It's you as a teacher or a communicator. And what you're saying is going to touch the lives of more people, even if you're not that close to them. And if we turn this one on, the front maybe four or five rows might feel it a little bit. But even this position won't touch everybody that I don't know and can't see. However, we've got 10 ton AC units in the building and you are affected by those. Some of you think too much, some of you think not enough. We differ, it's okay. The point being that there are aspects, positions, and areas of our life in which what we communicate affects different people. And we all have this variable. And so because of that, remembering that all communication carries the power to influence, we have to always be constantly aware of who am I influencing by how I communicate today. Because the reality is most people are going to stop at this level of influence naturally. But then you get those big shop fans, you get the AC units. There are some people put in positions of authority and influence who what you say and how you communicate will impact thousands that you don't know. This is the position of preachers and teachers, of politicians and leaders. Because of that, those people are usually picked very carefully because of the potential influence of what they say and how it will be received. But here's where even that position matters for all of us. Because we live in a culture where you don't have to be handpicked to influence thousands. You just have to have a login. You just have to have a social media account. And so while we don't see an audience on our social media accounts, especially as believers, we must begin to be very aware that all communication, not just the most intimate words spoken, not just those spoken in our community, not just those spoken in our workplace, but even those typed on a social media post or as a response to a post or even liking a post, every bit of communication will influence somebody. And the problem with social media, one of them for me, is that it gives a massive reach of influence to a lot of people who don't deserve the reach of influence. And because of that, there's a lot of damage being done that shouldn't be done. This is why, for, as Christians, as believers, as those who want to glorify God in all that we do, we have to begin to really embrace and understand the truth that all communication has the power for influence. And so because of that, I must be cautious and understand who am I influencing? And then secondly, how is my communication influencing them? If all communication influences, then I have to wonder, how is what I'm saying, how is what I'm doing influencing these people? If it's all going to communicate and it's all going to influence, what's it doing? Is it building them up? Is it encouraging? Is it inspiring? Is it challenging? Is it truth? Or is it destroying? Is it tearing down? Is it poisoning? Is it confusing? Is what I'm speaking, is how I'm communicating bringing life or death to that person? Because that's the severity that Solomon writes it as in, in Proverbs. Proverbs 18, just skip to verse 21. It says that the tongue can bring death or life. And those who love to talk reap the consequences. And all introverts said amen, right? No. 
It's not just talking about those who are more introverted or more extroverted. When he says those who love to speak reap the consequences, it's talking about those who love to speak without a filter. Those who just love to hear the sound of their own voice. Those who will just speak anything at any moment to anyone without any care or thought. To those people, they will reap their own destruction because of the power of influence that their communication carries, even if they don't intend for it to. The problem is we've dumbed down the influence of our communication. And so we often will throw out terms like, well, it was just sarcasm. I was just making a joke. I was just posting online for my friends. I was just kidding around or I was just hungry. I was tired. I was drunk. I didn't mean it. And so we try to throw this myriad of excuses to justify and dial back the severity of what we've communicated. But we have to remember that's not possible. Words cannot be taken back or quickly forgotten. And because of that, they must be carefully chosen. You will remember and hold on to things that you received through communication because of the way they impacted you. And they do not always influence someone the way you hope they will. We were eating dinner as a family one night. I think we were at my, my, my grandparents' house, my meemaw and papa's house. Um, and my mom was cooking chili for everybody. And now we grew up in a home where there wasn't multiple food options for dinner because you didn't like dinner. What mom cooked, you ate or you didn't eat. You know what I mean? And what mom cooked, you liked. And if you didn't like it, you shut up. Okay? Like, you just, you know, I gotta, you don't sit at the table and be like, mom, this is not your best today. Like, you're off your game. This isn't great. You know, can we maybe try this a little differently next time? No, no, no. Out of respect, you got your food. You were thankful for it and you ate your food. So my mom made this big pot of chili one night and we all sat down and we all got served and we're, we're starting to eat the chili and you immediately see the faces, right? It's like from first bite, something was wrong. But we can't say anything. So we just sit there as quietly as we can and with every small spoonful that we're chasing with tea or, or juice or water or whatever, we're just trying to stomach this best as we can because we don't want to be mean about it. And then my mom sits down and she takes her first bite and immediately is like, oh my gosh, what is wrong with this? And we're like, I know, it's terrible. <laughs> she opened the door, we can enter now. Like, and she's like, well, I don't understand, I did everything normal. And so she gets up and goes to the kitchen and immediately sees what happened. And realized that all seasoning is not the same seasoning. <laughs> and all seasoning that begins with the C is not the same seasoning. And we learned that day that there's a big difference between chili flakes and cinnamon powder. <laughs> One will elevate the chili. The other makes it unedible. <laughs> Our communication is not always equal. Not every word is equally received and not every word is equally beneficial. And because of that, not every word needs to be spoken. Some words are better left out. Some communication is better swallowed. Because we have to be careful, not just who we're speaking to or how we're influencing them, but we have to, have to be cautious to understand what is, what's guiding my communication. What is my communication guided by? Because we need it guided by the right thing. If you read James 3 again, it sounds near impossible to communicate well. But it all comes down to if we are guided by the wisdom of the Lord. Church, communication is a gift from God. The positions and relationships in which we have to influence through communication are gifts from God. The only question is, is the impact of our communication guided by God? Or is it guided by our emotions of the day? By our anger and our fear? by our insecurities and sadness, by our agenda or our thought that they have an agenda, or just by the fact that you're hangry. <laughs> and I saw that this week and I was reminded of that. Just 10 days ago, after Helene hit, you saw everything that made us different set aside for a few days. 
And you saw neighbors come together and communities come together and people who would be on the opposite side of everything in life look for ways to help each other. But then yesterday I saw that that was already gone. We're staying in line at Costco getting gas because that's just one of the things you do as a potential storm approaches and you live in Florida. And then I just began to hear it already. It's the yelling from car to car. And I look and see a man get out of his car and approach a car in front of him, assuming because it cut him off and now he's one car further back from getting gas that day. And I just see him laying into the car. And I'll be honest, I'm never the speak out person in those moments. But there's something in me that I don't know what overtook me and all I could do is begin to walk towards him to just say, shut up and get in your car. He did. I don't know if it's because of me. But he did. And as soon as I got back to the car, my first thought was, why did I do that? Like, that's not, that's not what I do. The thing is, I was angry at him because he was speaking from emotion. He didn't really hate the person. Ten days before, he probably would have been helping them. But there was something about the fear of the unexpected that's on its way that creates crazy in us. And we lose our filter and we lose our understanding of kindness. And that filter goes away and we just speak from a place that we don't realize we're in. And I realize that's what I did. Even just barking at him to get in his car was from a place of frustration. Because I'm watching what was a community helping each other and now tearing each other apart for 20 gallons of gas. And I let that be what guided me. The question is, what guides us when we communicate? Because if it's not the Lord God himself, then what we're communicating will do the damage that we did not intend for it to do. And so we have to understand how far we're willing to go to make sure that everything we speak is guided by the Lord. Because we have to understand again the depth that all communication, all of it, has the power for influence. And that communication does not have a return policy. You could apologize for it, you could try to correct it, but you can never take it back. It's, it's, an, old, it's an old narrative story that we'll close with as the band comes up. We wanna worship just for a moment. Man walked up to, to his, his pastor and says, Pastor, I've, I've offended a friend of mine I said what I said, said some things I shouldn't have said. How, what do I do? How do I, how do I get it back? How do I make it right? And, and the pastor told me, he said, tonight, he said, I want you to take, take, take a, a thing of feathers and I want you to go around the community and I want you to put a feather at every doorstep. And then tomorrow morning, I want you to go pick up the feathers. So he went out and he set a feather at every doorstep and the next morning he went to go pick them up and no surprise to any of us, they were all gone. And he went to his pastor, he said, pastor, he said, I, I did what you asked me to do. I went and I set out a feather at every doorstep. The problem is they were all gone the next day. I couldn't collect them. And he said, nor can you take back what you said. Once it's there, it's there and it's gone. So we must be more cautious. Church, our job as believers is to make sure that everything we do and say reflects the heart of God and points people towards the love of God. And if we are not asking the Holy Spirit to guide our communications at every level and in every moment, then we will never achieve that goal. So how willing are we to say, God, you guide it all. You take everything. Like what if that's how we began every morning? We wake up, we stretch, we crick our back, whatever it is to get you out of the bed. We thank God for another day. And then we say, God, I want you to guide every word that I say. Just, just be the filter of my tongue. Let nothing be spoken that is not from you, glorifying to you and loving towards someone else. How different would our community be if everything we said was guided by the love of God? How different would our community be if it wasn't about how can I over insult you or over correct you or over this or outdo that, but instead we outdid each other with words of kindness and love and grace. How different would it be? 
And so this morning, I'm going to ask you to stand, and we're just, we're just going to sing the end of this song, even here, even now. And our heart is that, that as we surrender what we have to the Lord, that even here, even now, we believe that he is always with us. That as believers in Christ, we have the Holy Spirit in us. And that if we will allow him to, he will filter and lead everything we do and say, even here, even now, especially in the season that we are in. So no matter what fear of whatever's coming, that none of that would infect us and impact us to the point that we would not speak in a way that reflects the heart of God for people and points them to him. Father, we thank you for who you are. We trust in you, and we ask in this moment, Lord, that you would just lead in God our heart, that you would direct our thoughts and our steps this week, and that you would be glorified in the way that we communicate and in the way that we love each other. Father, be glorified and praised, even now as we worship you. Lord, we love you.